Hello. Hello. Sorry about that. Hello. Anyway, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to um, Kerbal Space Program. Actually, if I turn on the UI here, you can see that this is most definitely Kerbal. The way it, the staging thing, some Kerbal sound there. Anyway, that's not the point. This the point is to show you this thing that I've been kind of trying to work on. Um, I actually have the headphones on so you can't really hear the music. If you can, that's fine. <clears throat> it's in the sun. Thought it'd be easier to see in the sun. Not really the front, um, super. Whatever. Um. I can't stop shaking this thing. Anyway. So yeah, this is gonna be my interplanetary spacecraft. I'm using, uh, many mods. Right now, this, um, this cockpit, there's, um, this cockpit here is from, uh, Deep Space Exploration Vehicle, along with the centrifuge, a few other parts. These are the standard solar panels and radiators. Near future electric um, reactor over here. Some more um, parts for from Deep Space Exploration Vehicle mod. All connected with um, big the the big docking ports, the, the Clampertron Seniors. Some uh. Oh, it might be a bit easier to see right here. So, sorry about that. Um, I have all the lights on for the in inside. Just be, just I, I felt like it. I don't know. I just thought the lights would be. Give me a second. Like I thought the lights would be slightly easier. Let's see if I um lights off. Can you actually see it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see it now. Right? Oh yeah. So that that's that's essentially what it is. I um, do the same thing for that one. I'm actually looking at the camera right now to show you guys. As you can see, there's a bunch of near future. There's a there's a few near future parts. This is a the uh, Her MX5 Hermes fission reactor from Near Future Electrical. What's in I have? I think it doesn't have any uh, depleted fuel on it. Yeah, that's what it is. I ran it for a bit. It's it's a pretty good tank. Can't. I keep forgetting to put, I can't put lights on that thing. Anyway, well, at least I can put lights on. I just not, I just haven't. I'm really, I really apologize for the shaking. Um, I gotta do something about that later. Anyway, um, I'm really sorry if you can't really hear me either. It's, um, actually, it's a lot, it makes it a lot easier to see if I just do that for anything. I'm sorry if you can't hear me. Um, here, I'm good. Give me a second. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, I'm sorry if you couldn't hear me. If you could, and then bravo. Anyway, right now I'm pointing radial outward, so it's actually just in there. If I do that, um, no, that's, that's, a, that's not going to do much. Just keep it radial out. It's fine. F2. As you can see, we have a, um, Quite the array of communication dishes here. This is a uh, scanning thing from near, um, not near future, deep space exploration vehicle right here. And then this is the uh, this these this like tripod right here is. And there's a relay. There's two relay uh, medium sized relay satellites from the stock game. And we have three of the small three smaller radar dishes. Um, give me a second. I don't even know what they are. That's all right. I've got the AE five, which is this thing. Um, here we go, give me a sec. There we go. Like the, the HD55 Communitrons, relay antennas. That, overall, I think it's a quite a nice ship that I'm working on, that I've got going here. Plenty of extra parts here. Lots of RCS thrusters. Um, RC, lots of RCS fuel, actually, too. Water and, um, I have water and fusion pellets up here right now. To power my power the engine, which will come from the um, which mod is that? The deep space extra deep space exploration vehicle. Let's start. You know, I'm just gonna have it start spinning. Yeah, it's a centrifuge, so it starts spinning. But um, I'm gonna the engine's gonna come from what's it? Not uh, I keep I keep wanting to say keep wanting to say near future. It's not near future. It is uh, the deep space exploration vehicle. DS EV. I'm just gonna say that instead. DS, DS, DS EV. But there. 
and one of those engines, the the really really big f fusion and fission, not fusion. No, yeah, it is a fusion engine. It's gonna be stuck on the end of this thing. It's actually pretty big. Goes probably goes out to about um there. Um, yeah, there's quite a bit of stuff here. There's also the. Yeah, I have these spots for like more fuel tanker, fuel bunkerage. We have to add more external tanks over time. Maybe more external tanks. Right now, my fuel is at my main capacity of fuel is thirty four is thirty four forty for oxidizer and twenty eight fourteen for liquid fuel, which is a fairly good ratio. But I think it's a good. I think it's good. But um, I'm gonna need a lot more fuel than that. Well, actually, um, I'm not even going to be using liquid fuel and oxidizer, so I don't even know what the problem is. A lot of it's in there. A lot of the stuff I have is in there. Most of it is. Uh, I don't even know where the rest of it's coming from. <laughs> that's rocket parts. It's water, and that's that's more water, I think. Um, those are ore containers. All four of those are ore containers. Um, I'm not really sure where the rest of the stuff is coming from. Probably bits somewhere that I've... Oh, wait. Liquid fuel and oxidizer, that's right. I have liquid fuel and oxidizer up here. Oh, you can't see. I'm sorry. I've been looking... I'm looking over the, f um, the recording device here. So, sorry if you can't see that much. I'm, I deeply apologize. Um... Yeah, that, that's where my liquid fuel oxidizer stuff is coming from. I can prob, I can reconfigure it right now if I wanted, but I'm not going to. I'm going to probably reconfigure it later. Um, but right now, my beautiful near future reactor, um, I can probably run it about. I can run it at 10% power. It's 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 a beautiful reactor. It produces more power than I need. Well, unless I have the engine and turn it on, but that's beside the point. So. Right, yeah, right now it's um, it's reactor, it's offline. But if I bring it up to power, it's gonna be like twenty something years minimum. I think it's gonna be a long time. Um, that's not it. That's not it either. I'm sorry. Um, but if I turned it on, it'd have like twenty something years, at least, of power. Excuse me. The monoprop tank, the very big monoprop tank. Um, I really like this monoprop tank just because it fits with a 3.5 size. And as you can see, it's either like it's either 3.5 or it's the two. It's, no, not 3.5. Sorry, the 3.75 or the 2.5. Um, but I have to. I use the 2.5s for a good section of it here, and then over here as well. And actually, yeah. So here. And then here is 2.5, and the only reason for that is because that's the, just the size of the docking ports. But everything else is pretty much 3.5, 3.75. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. Um, and some hex trust, some hex trust that I loaded with fuel. I don't even know why I have fuel in there, but whatever. There's also the, um, the capacitors. I have many. Mm, I have. I have 18,000 stored charge in capacitors in case my batteries run out. So I can just pump that through. And using this tab, I can probably just boom, boom. Yeah, I can just, just quickly do that. But, um, yeah, it can, it can also recharge, which is good. Um, it's very nice. There's another capacitor bank. No, that's not a capacitor bank. What am I thinking? That is a nuclear fuel drum for the reactor which is why on the which is why it's on the reactor module because it's fuel SAS. I have lots of SAS kind of I have not that much actually probe cores and a fair amount of just random SAS drone here and there there's a there's actually one in there if I can highlight yeah As you can see, there's a, there's actually one. There's a there's a reaction wheel in there. And there's another one on this side, I think. There's a. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, the, actually there is. It's right. It's right there. I have a fair number of SAS on a fair amount of SAS, but given the size of the ship, I'm probably going to need more. Cool thing about these is um this actually comes from like one of the, either the airship I think or Heisenberg airship I forget which one it's an airship mod, one of them and it spins. If you do that, this one actually spins too, but um you is it's a scanner and you activate it and it goes up and t telescopes and up and spins. I thought it just telescope, which would have been cool, but um no it spins as well. So I don't have it spinning right now. Nor nor will I really ever, because um, I'm probably going to have the centrifuge spinning, and it might just hit the centrifuge if it does that. This capacity, this crew, this thing actually has a crew of like 40-something Kerbals that can operate it. it probably stuff inside. And then you'd have to, you'd, I'd bring it home. I'd go out somewhere else and then bring it home. And when I bring it home, I just shuttle them down a bit. A few at a time, using probes and I don't know. I I typically use Mark Three command Mark One Two, not Mark Three. Mark One Two command pods because they're they're easy to they're easy to use, and I'm cheap that way. <clears throat> not really cheap because um, single use rockets are expensive, but um, cheap. oh, don't mind this. I was um I just. I actually just put this section on here that starts from here and goes no not here it starts from here and goes all the way down to here it starts from this it from this one all the way down to this end um, <laughs> and I decoupled something and started bringing out the radiators and I kind of exploded all of them and most of them weren't even deployed I still have one of them left which is I mean it's nice that I still have like one left even though all the others are exploded and I can't fix them because radiator is not something you can actually fix in the Kerbal Space Program I, was, I think it was this one that blew up everything I don't know, it was this I don't know which one it was it was one, it was probably this one anyway <clears throat> excuse me I don't even know how I got that one, that one was closed and it was on the other side but you know, everything just explodes these days, especially in Kerbal Space Program. Um, these capacitors are near from Near Future Electrical, if, in case you're wondering. And these, these cool tanks here are from the DSCV, along with this and this, and practically, practically the entire ship uh, is from D DSCV. That's from like station science, no, not station, like some station mod, and so is this one. So are the so are the mo most of the docking boards. Like this one's a nice one. I like the I like the um the one the mo the docking ports that have monoprop stuffed in them. One is just one is just funny, and two. Oh, I hit periaps already. I didn't even notice. Um. So one, it's one, it's kind of fine, just like hey, I got monoprop tanks stuffed in there, and two, it's useful. It's extremely useful. Now, if you actually look in here, um, you see that I've got these. You know what? I'm gonna aim the camera right here and just zoom in. You can see that I have monoprop stuff, tank stuffed in here, so. Um, yeah. Mm. So I have monoprop tanks in there. And these are for, this is water. These are all water. The ones on the outside are, and then the ones inside are fusion pellets. For, for more fuel for the engine. And these are, this is from like, I think this is from Heisenberg. The solar array, which is pretty cool. Because it's curved. Oh, shoot. It's not good. I have let's try here anyway. Um, back to this side anyway. Um, back to that side. Um, there's it's pretty much mirrored on both on either side, so I prefer this side because I can see things. And actually, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but I know that you can actually at least fairly see it. Uh, let's aim the camera to here, which is more or less the. 
I don't know the center of mass of the vessel. I'm not even really sure where the center of mass for this vessel is. Simply because I didn't build in the VIB and I don't have a mod that will t would tell me. Oh, give me a give me a second while I um. I'm gonna fast forward today before I continue. Excuse, uh, excuse me. Be right back. And we are back. Um, yeah, sorry about uh, all that. Um, I, I stopped the centrifuge because it, in time warp, it, it still go spins and it's got, it was scaring the crap out of me. So I, that's why I stopped the centrifuge. But I do have the vanilla gargantuan, gargantor, so XL solar rays. And, um, apparently at 50 times time warp, this baby, this entire th baby you, here uses 300 electric charge per second over 300 right now you can see that this is going up by, by about 100 per second yeah and the solar panels are recharging them but the power hung this power hungry ship even with, with the centrifuge off too actually was sucking in oh, oh I'm sorry so yeah I had these solar panels recharging all the batteries but this entire power-hungry ship sucks up 350-ish electric charge per second when in time warp and not and no solar panels are exposed to the sun. That much is proven right now. I like the light sun actually. Do that. You can't even see anything. And also, if I'm I'm not going to EVA Jeb. I'm going to view from his. You can see we have the EMH from Star Trek. No, it's a I think that's Bill. I don't know which one this is. And that's the other one. All right, now I'm looking from Jeb's point of view. He is the captain of this um, thing, of the ship. I'm gonna move the camera back, but and he's the captain of this vessel. And there's some guys who would play pong over there if they were actually in here. And not in <laughs> the centrifuge. C. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, this is my ship, and I would, um, yeah, it's really what I, what I just want to show you the ship. So, um, anyway, don't really have anything else to say. So, um, Bye-bye.